a lot of you have been asking me, how do you be more confident when you have Tourette's? This is so hard. <laughs> and this is such a massive umbrella. Confident, how do you be confident? <sighs> and you're probably thinking, Seamus, why am I listening to you about confidence? What makes you the expert? I failed school, I have Tourette syndrome, I've got ADHD, I was always called a dumbass, and growing up I was a not so a smart. But I have had a very long career on television, radio, stand-up comedy, as a keynote speaker. All of the odds are stacked against me, but I've been able to make a career out of it. Now, confidence is not something you can really learn out of a book. It's not something you can go to university for. It's not something you can put on a resume or study for a test. Confidence comes from within, comes from up here and here. So you have to think, well, how can you be more internally confident? That starts with a thing called a message to your inner child. See, everybody is insecure. Everybody faces adversity. Adversity does not discriminate. Adversity is just a difficult or challenging period. And your inner child always plays tricks on you. Your inner child is that little voice inside of you that always kind of brings you down or reminds you of those embarrassing things. For example, how many times did you accidentally call the teacher mum instead of miss? Or you went up to an accept an award and you tripped over in front of the whole crowd and everyone laughed. Those little memories, your inner child, your inner critic remembers. And when you go to step out of your comfort zone and do something that requires confidence, your inner critic reminds you of it. Hey, remember that time you called the teacher mum instead of miss? You're stupid, you're dumb, don't do it. It's trying to keep you inside of your comfort zone. It's actually designed for your own protection. So you don't step into dangerous situations. But we all know nothing good happens inside your comfort zone. No growth happens inside your comfort zone. And in order to step out of your comfort zone, you need to take tiny little steps and it grows bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But in order to step out of your comfort zone, you need to have confidence. Write down messages to convince your inner child you are capable. See, there's a massive difference between confidence and arrogance. Confidence is the mindset of capability. I am capable of doing this. It's reassurance in your own ability. So when you write down these messages to convince your inner child, hey, you don't need to keep me inside the comfort zone because I'm capable here. For example, I've done this for years. I literally would write down messages to say, hey, Seamus, you are funny. Seamus, you are confident. Seamus, you are enough. Seamus, you are deserving. You deserve this. These things to try and ingrain in my brain to say, keep going, keep having a go, step out of your comfort zone. It's going to be all right. Now, jumping into the deep end is always a really difficult thing. If you can't swim and you jump into the deep end, boom, it's not a fun time. <laughs> You're constantly trying to stay above water. But if you step into the shallow end and slowly step closer and closer, by the time you're in the deep end, you'll be able to confidently swim because you're capable and you've learned how to do it along the way. There are many other techniques that I have employed over my life and my career to become more confident. Before you get up and talk in front of a massive crowd, or in my instance, before a live television cross, or getting up to do stand-up comedy, the amount of times my brain would be like, ah, Seamus, don't do this, this is scary. Take big deep breaths, relax. I would have to tell my brain, this is not going to be as bad as you realize. I would shut my eyes, I would spread my fingers out wide, and I would take deep breaths until my fingers and hands stopped shaking. And I could feel a consistency in my breath. So I wasn't going I would do it until there was a, a clear, smooth, rhythmic breathing pattern. I would always imagine the perfect outcome. For example, if I was going to go up to a group of strangers and introduce myself, usually if you're not very confident, your brain starts playing those tricks on you, keeping you inside of your comfort zone. Don't do it. They're going to reject you. They're going to laugh at you. You're going to be embarrassed. They don't like your pants. Instead, I would visualize a positive result. This is going to go great. This is going to be hilarious. I'm going to say this joke and I'm going to do it with confidence. I'm gonna put my arm out and shake their hand. 
I would purposely plan out in my brain how it's actually going to go. And listen, not everything's perfect, okay? I was planning for 100% success, right? And it wouldn't always be the case. But because I pre-thought it, pre-planned, and had this positive visualization, it was a lot better than if I wasn't confident. Now, obviously, on my channel, I talk a lot about having Tourette syndrome and being neurodiverse. Right on cue. And a lot of you, my subscribers, have asked me, hey, how do I be more confident about having Tourette syndrome? It is so embarrassing. I hate it and I haven't brought it up to any of my friends. That is a really tough one. The only way I can answer that is through my own journey. I had to go through an acceptance period. There was a time where I didn't like admitting it. I didn't like telling anyone and I didn't like revealing the truth of being what I considered a freak, a weirdo, not normal and different to everyone. Therefore thinking no one's gonna like me because I'm weird because of my Tourette syndrome. But I went through an acceptance journey. So I had to sit back internally reevaluate and go, okay, I do have Tourette's. I am different. Some people might consider me weird. That's okay. That's not my problem. That's their problem. Just because they think I might be weird, that doesn't make me weird. I was born like this and this is normal. Let's face it, there's no such thing as normal. And that's where I would do a lot more positive reinforcement. I really strongly believe in the power of language. So associating words with how you feel helps you become more confident. Having little private locker room chats with myself. Seamus, you've got this. Yes, this is gonna be amazing. You can do this. You are capable. I loved programming the word yes with excitement, confidence, achievement. I'd walk around going, yes, yes, come on. This is gonna be great. I love this. This is amazing. To try and program my brain, you love this. You're capable, you can do it. Now, when it comes to introducing yourself to people and saying you've got Tourette's, I used to preempt their reaction. So the amount of times I could already see, they're gonna make a comment, they're gonna make a joke. Hmm, they've already picked up on it. You can see their eyes go, what did you do there? Why did you do that little head movement? <laughs> and I can see it already. It's written all over their face like a novel. So I'd have like four or five catchphrases, sentences, jokes ready to go. So when they mentioned, oh, why do you keep twitching like that? I would preemptively be like, yeah, I've got Tourette's. And my delivery, the way I had a smile, my positive attitude would disarm them. Because do you know how many times you tell someone, yeah, I've got Tourette's and they go, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I did not mean to bring that up. I don't care. <laughs> like they didn't give me the Tourette's. Why are they apologizing? I, and it would actually annoy me because I'm like, oh, don't put your guilt on me. So the way I would answer that would be with confidence and be like, yeah, I've got Tourette's. Don't worry, you're allowed to laugh. It's funny, I find it funny too. What I found that actually did was disarm them. And so their reaction was nowhere near as bad or severe as what my insecure brain thought. There is something that I live by called exposure therapy. Now exposure therapy is like what I mentioned before, taking those little tiny steps from the shallow end to the deep end. Every time you step closer towards the deep end, it gets a little deeper, exposing yourself to that amount of water. I'm trying to talk metaphorically here. So every time you step out of your comfort zone, if you just take little tiny steps, exposing yourself to these nerve wracking situations, before you even realize you'll turn around Oh my gosh, look how far out of my comfort zone I am. Now, this internal confidence is not overnight, okay? And everybody with Tourette syndrome or adversity or considered flaw or insecurity, everyone is on their own journey and their own acceptance journey. If they're not ready to accept it, well, it's gonna be a really long time until you're more confident in it. I would also practice having conversations with people who I thought would recognize my Tourette's or practice having conversations with people revealing my Tourette's. Honestly, I seem like a massive weirdo because the amount of times I talk to myself, I'll walk and talk, I'll walk around the house, I'll walk around the park, talking to myself, practicing different situations. And yeah, it might look weird, but you know what that does? It equips me with the experience of putting that sentence together. So I do it, so in those social settings, Bam, I'm experienced, I've got it. I've had the conversation a million times. So if you're feeling a little bit insecure with whatever it is that you're going through, you're not feeling very confident, you're struggling with who you are as a person, start looking internally and not worrying about what you think the world thinks of you. 
Don't worry about that. Here's the thing. Everyone is always going to talk about you. They're going to always talk badly and positively. You can't help that. The world is a crazy and weird place. That'll never stop. You're not in control of that. What you are in control of is how you think about yourself. So looking internally, rewarding your brain, giving yourself little pep talks, connecting power language with a positive feeling. Start convincing your inner child to step out of the comfort zone, reminding yourself you are capable. You are capable of more than what you actually think, much more than what you realize. Take little moments to step out of your comfort zone, just slightly, step by step. Expose yourself to those nerve wracking experiences and start practicing those conversations to yourself in the mirror. These will better equip you for when you actually have them in person. Finding ways to improve your attitude because if you're constantly thinking negatively, well then that is going to be like an insecure spiral and you're gonna feel more insecure about life because your attitude is so negative. I know that seems like such a generic answer like, yo man, just change your attitude and you could be more confident. I know it seems like an idea in the clouds, but on a daily basis, if you're trying to do things to improve your attitude, your confidence will grow and then reward yourself every single time you take a small step out of your comfort zone. Give yourself a pat on the back, man. Go have an amazing lunch. Have a chocolate bar, I don't care. Even if it's verbally, just give yourself a pat on the back verbally. Good on you, man. Hey, I'm so proud of you for stepping out of your comfort zone. I'm so proud of you for telling that extra person you've got Tourette's. I am so impressed with how you handled it. The way you speak to yourself is so important. I have personally found speaking to yourself more positively helps you be more confident. Look, I really hope that this has helped answer some of your questions or inspired you to start experimenting with stepping out of your comfort zone because what works for me may not work for you and vice versa. It's all about starting the process. Just start experimenting, start trialing, work out what works and what doesn't work. This is how you are gonna find your formula to what makes you more confident. You will not be more confident by sitting in your room and not doing anything and thinking on a negative spiral that the world hates you. You will become more confident if you start, try it, experiment, step out of your comfort zone, just slightly, and trust me, before you know it, your comfort zone will go from this to this. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts on everything I've just said. If you've gotten to the whole video, good work. <laughs> Congratulations, you win this, dog. Let me know what you think in the comments section if you thought I missed out any other techniques or do you have any techniques on how to be more confident? I'd love to hear them. Let's start this conversation and let's continue it. Good luck. Thanks for watching.